Whether you're thinking of going into dental school or you're already in it, you're not going to want to miss this one. And this is how I'm starting my day. It's 7.49 a.m. I'm going to the office. It's currently minus 28 Celsius in Thunder Bay. Let's go. It's just before 8 a.m. Right now I've got a bunch of fillings planned, some extractions, a couple of toothaches. We're gonna do some diagnosis together, some treatment planning, crown cementation, denture delivery and adjustment. And with the type of practice that I have, my schedule's always changing, so you never know what's gonna show up. So I work out of two operatories. This is one of my ops. This is my second op with two assistants. I just froze a patient in there. So for this patient, we have a broken cusp at the back of the tooth. You can see the fracture here. So we're going to be restoring this for you. That patient just fractured one of the cusps of one of their molars. Patient fractured 4-7, which is their lower right second molar, worn without crown, may fracture. And so what we need to do as dentists is make sure that we're telling patients and informing them of what their options are and what the likelihood of different outcomes is. And then ultimately it's up to them to choose what they want to do. And in this case, the patient just wanted to restore the tooth and with the understanding that it may not last forever. Okay, so this patient, we just did two gum line cavities. So top left, bottom right. Um, these are super common in older patients. You see these uh, cavities that exist right along the gum line. They're also known as class five lesions. And so I just did two of those. Pretty easy to treat, very common in older individuals. Okay, so here we have a patient who has fractured her upper left second premolar. So we did take a x-ray of the tooth. The patient is fortunate in that she has a fairly recessed nerve. Okay, and here we have the post-operative. We restored the tooth. I've made the one cusp a little bit shorter, just that she's not going to put a ton of pressure on it. It's behind the aesthetic area. We're giving this tooth the best chance of lasting long term. So this patient has presented with a large carous lesion on their lower first molar. And if we look on the x-ray, we can see how the lesion has gone into where the pulp chamber of the tooth is, and that's resulted in an infection beneath the tooth. The patient has decided that extraction is the best course here, or best option. I do think that there's a chance that the tooth may end up fracturing. If that's the case, likely what we'll do is we will section the tooth into two pieces, elevate out the first root, then elevate out the second root as a way of successfully removing the tooth without causing the patient too much pressure in light of the clinical presentation of the crown. Hey friends, if you're new around here, I'm Joel. I'm a recently graduated dentist and I also work at DT Bootcamp and Roadmap Prep. I make videos to help you along your dental journey. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. Okay, so this patient has a lower left premolar fracture and we've restored the bottom tooth. So a little bit about how I book my days. I work in 30 minute increments for almost everything. So I book whether it's a filling, extraction, um, everything except for root canals are booked in 30 minute increments. Okay, so we're doing a recall exam for a patient. So what is it that we're actually doing? Well, one, we're looking at all of the soft tissues and examining the mouth and around and evaluating each of the teeth. You can see that that my explorer falls into this area and there's a cavity there. Um, if I were to continue going around and I'm going slowly, I can get my explorer into a cavity in this region. Okay, so I was just trying in some partial dentures for a patient. 
you can see here that we have the cast frameworks for the partial on the top and on the bottom. Now, because the patient doesn't have any back teeth, what the lab does is they add wax to the back on each side. We then will use this Bunsen burner on a blowtorch and we'll adjust the height of this wax until we see the type of balance that we want for the patient on both sides. And for this patient, we're going to be replacing a bottom molar filling that she's lost and as well as two cavities on her upper. Okay, that previous patient down, we're now on to the next one. She has carries on both sides of her mouse, but we're just going to be working on the right for today. We're going to be doing the upper right second premolar and interproximal caries between the lower right second molar and first molar MODL. Okay, here's our one preparation and our preparation at the bottom. Okay, so we've done the restorations. There's the top and there's the bottom. So what we're looking for is we're trying to create a nice contact in between the teeth. I'll use two sectional matrices at the same time, one sectional ring, do the fillings together, and I found that's yielded a very positive result for me. Okay, so we're going to be doing a crayon cementation on this tooth, the upper left second three molar. And new crayon in. Okay, 12.30, just the crayon cementation. I've been here since eight. I've so far seen 10 patients, myself, and done about th four recalls uh, between my two hygiene ops. Uh, the common question, do you take lunches? And the answer is no, I'm a faster. It's 12.39 p.m. I just had my first cancellation of the day. This is something that is comes with the territory of being a dentist, is that you're going to have cancellations. I mitigate this slightly by having only 30-minute appointments, which means that when a patient doesn't show up, it's less catastrophic. I don't have a huge hole in my day. This was a last-minute cancellation, so we can't move a toothache and fill in the hole, but I don't actually mind. One of the nice things about dentistry is that if you don't have a patient, particularly if you've been having a busy day, it's not actually the worst thing in the world. You just sit back, relax, do something else. For example, I work on DET prep at DET Boot Camp. Camp and on my online video course for dental school interview prep at roadmapprep.com. So sometimes dental diagnosis is really hard. Just have this patient come in. Now this patient, previously a long time ago, had a root canal completed on this tooth right here, upper left first premolar, and a crayon on his upper left first premolar and his first molar. The patient's complaining of having pain in his upper left jaw. Now, clinical presentation, I look in the mouth, you can see almost like a little pimple above the area, exactly almost in between the premolar and the first molar. That doesn't really tell us a lot. Now, both of these teeth have been crowned, so you can't apply a cold stimulus to the tooth, to this first molar, and see if it can still feel the cold. So that's out as a diagnostic technique. Now, another technique that we have is to tap on the teeth. Both of these teeth, when we tap on them, respond negative. This is a challenging case because radiographically, both of these teeth present with a potential infection above them. Uh, diagnostically, intraorally, we can't use any techniques to differentiate them. So how do we figure out what it is. Well, this is a case I'm going to leave for a specialist because I don't have the faintest clue. I think that it is this first molar based on the signs of what I see around here and uh, intraorally where I see the infection clinically. But again, I don't have enough to make a firm diagnosis, so I'm going to be sending him to a specialist and see if they can come up with anything more clearly. Hi, love. Look at this little visitor that we have at our office. Look at this little Aussie smush. Aussie smush! Okay, for obvious reasons, this is something that I wasn't able to film. I just saw a pediatric patient, a child patient for fillings. You can see some of the caries on this radiograph here. So we have over a one-year wait for pediatric dentists in Thunder Bay. So I try and treat pediatric patients, children patients, wherever I can. So I freeze the patient and she starts crying, screaming. Um, she's unconsolable, can barely breathe. And I learned this tip from a friend of mine who's going into a pediatric dentistry residency. And I go, wait, 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 wait. What do you see your favorite color was? And she goes, blue. And then I go, wait, how long do you say it was your favorite color? And she goes, a while. So I know about kids that are obsessed with their favorite colors, and it is a great technique to try and circuit break the crime and then start having a conversation with them so you can distract them and bring them down from their elevated state.
put him in too We can start with a blindfold You know the love goes deep, baby Tell me what you I'm not doing any root canals today Normally I have a few in a week So I'm going to show you an interesting case that presented at my office recently So this patient unfortunately was assaulted She was hit in the face And both of these two teeth were subluxated So they were still in her mouth But because of the impact they were loose She saw an oral surgeon who removed the one tooth And then applied a splint That's this wire that you can see To connect these two teeth To stabilize them And then sent the patient to me After evaluating the case and talking to the patient about the prognosis She wanted to do what she could to try and save these teeth. So we ended up completing root canal treatment on the two front teeth that she still had remaining. Now I'm pretty pleased with the outcome clinically, but the patient is aware that this is a compromised prognosis and we're not sure long term if these teeth are going to remain in her mouth. So our next patient has presented with a large infection over her front left lateral tooth. She's declined root canal treatment and has decided she'd like to have it removed. And this is a common presentation for a tooth that has a dental infection. You can see it almost looks like a pimple above the tooth. This is the infection that's developed, finding its easiest path of escape, which is coming through, out through the bone and the gum tissue. Was an asshole in and out like it's all at a time. Commitment ain't even a thought on his mind. You could settle, but the feeling ain't right. Tell me what you're feeling tonight. Yeah, it's like we both need a rain check. Tell me I'm the one that needs saving. Tell me I'm the one with an angle, driving through life that ain't paved yet. The good and the bad And we can play it like a wish you had And we can play it like the future or past That's how the day's almost over. I just finished that extraction. I have one final patient left to do some fillings and a partial denture delivery. Overall, this wasn't a completely crazy day. I didn't have a lot of side bookings, a lot of toothaches, patients coming in from out of town that I need to see on an emergency basis. Most of the appointments that I saw were just a couple of fillings, whereas sometimes I do more extensive quadrant or even a heavy section dentistry. But this is what you can expect your day to be like as a general dentist. You've seen lots of patients for fillings, maybe some extractions, maybe some root canals, maybe some more higher end dentistry, doing recalls, you're bouncing between rooms. And dentistry, for me, I find, is a career where your attitude makes all of the difference. If you're having fun with it, if you're enjoying yourself, if you're trying to get better with every procedure, you have a growth mindset, you want to do things a little bit quicker, you want to get a little bit better at them, then it can be fun because you're constantly challenging yourself. On the flip side of that, dentistry can be a very boring career if you're just trying to get through the day and earn another buck as you collect your paycheck. So to me, I think attitude is very important and I try to have a positive one throughout the day and I think it makes it more fun for my assistants, the people who work with me. And I also think that my patients can pick up that I'm having fun and it just makes it a more pleasant place to be. As you can hopefully tell, I really enjoy my career and if you're interested in a career in dentistry, I'd recommend checking out these videos that I've made on how much money dentists actually make and whether dentistry is a dying profession, whether it's still worth going into today with all the student debt. And if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe and support my channel by smashing that like button. I make videos to help you along your dental journey and I'll see you in the next one.